Efforts to rescue the five passengers of the missing Titan submersible are ongoing, but it has been reported that the submersible is left with only 12 hours of oxygen supply. According to the US Coast Guard, a Canadian airplane operating in the Atlantic Ocean has picked up periodic banging sounds emanating from the region where the submarine was last detected. This information was shared to inform experts about updates on the submarine's possible whereabouts. The crew in search of the missing submarine reported hearing banging noises every half an hour, and four hours later on Wednesday, similar sounds were again detected after deploying more sonar equipment. The US Coast Guard stated that the origin of the noise is currently unknown. Josh Gates, an experienced explorer, revealed that he opted not to dive in Ocean Gate's Titan submarine, stating that the sub did not perform well during his prior use. Before the diving vessel's initial foray to the Titanic site, the Ocean Gate CEO, Stockton Rush, was among the five missing individuals who had joined Gates, the host of the Discovery Show Expedition Unknown, on a test dive. On social media, Gates clarified that Titan did not perform well during his dive, leading him to back out of a substantial opportunity to film Titanic due to safety concerns with the Ocean Gate platform. According to Sabrina Daywood, the sister of Mr. Darwood, their family's main concern is the safe retrieval of her brother and nephew, and they are committed to achieving this task. The Titan is fitted with a reserve of emergency oxygen that can last for up to four days. Ocean Gate's Titan was transported to the waters above the Titanic by its support vessel, the Polar Prince. Currently, the Polar Prince is aiding in the efforts to locate and save those in need. Sean Leet, the co-founder and chair of Horizon Maritime Services, emphasized that the equipment used for the mission is good and extremely proficient, highlighting that it is unparalleled in the world. He went on to mention that although time may be running out, there is still a chance of finding surviving crew members, as the submersible still has life support available. His statements conveyed optimism and a determination to continue looking for the missing crew until all options are exhausted. He further stated, that despite having years of experience in the marine industry, he had never witnessed such swift movement of equipment similar to this situation. The efficient execution of the task involved the coordinated efforts of the US Coast Guard, US military, airport personnel, local residents, and various corporations involved in the equipment mobilization process, all of which were seamlessly integrated to achieve success. One hour ago, the United States Coast Guard said that 130 Hercules fixed-wing aircraft conducted a search, saying that it spanned over 870 miles over the search area. Aircraft from partner agencies are also scheduled to search. The press conference held by Captain Jamie Frederick of the 1st Coast Guard District in Boston, Massachusetts, addressed the ongoing efforts to locate the Titan, a vessel carrying a crew of five that disappeared in the deep waters of Canada's coast. The information provided was aimed at an expert audience and conveyed in a neutral tone, with a focus on informing them on the latest updates of the search mission. The media briefing is occurring in light of the fact that the vessel has under 20 hours of oxygen remaining. The submersible lost contact with the surface ship only one hour and 45 minutes after commencing the journey. He admitted that there is uncertainty regarding the rescue of the passengers on the submarine even if they succeed in locating it before air supply runs out. The search aircraft from Canada made a dramatic discovery while looking for the missing submarine. It detected irregular banging noises, originating from the area where the divers were last seen. These sounds were heard every 30 minutes on Tuesday, and once again four hours later, after more sonar equipment had been added. The ship was expected to send a signal to the Polar Prince every quarter of an hour, but communication was lost which was one hour and 45 minutes after the submersion. The fate of the submarine and the individuals aboard is still unknown. According to Chris Parry, a former British Navy Rear Admiral, the vessel of Ocean Gate Expeditions may have experienced a catastrophic failure or could have been obstructed by the remnants of the well-known shipwreck. According to Mr. Parry, there are two possibilities to consider regarding the lost communication with the submarine. Either it has lost its umbilical communication with the surface, or it is still functional, but not in contact with the mothership due to a potential malfunction. It is apparent that on the opposite side of the spectrum, an accident may have occurred, causing the object to become entangled in the wreckage of the Titanic. It is plausible 
that it could have experienced a disastrous malfunction. When queried about the availability of food and beverages on the Titan, he could only verify that there are a few restricted provisions on board. Despite expert analysis, the source of the sounds detected by Canadian planes in the ocean remains unknown. Captain Frederick has reported the recurrence of these noises today. The captain said that in the midst of a search and rescue operation, hope is always present, but said that it is unclear what the noises signify, but the search is focused on the vicinity where they were heard. He emphasized the importance of retaining a positive and optimistic outlook. Carl Hartsfield, a representative of the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution, said that it's a daunting task to determine the origin of these sounds, but noted that officials are working hard in order to get to the bottom of what these noises are and where they are coming from. He stated that each and every one of those sounds is under analysis, monitoring, pattern detection, and reporting. According to Hartsfield, the noises have been characterized as banging noises. Acoustic analysts must consider the context and rule out any possible artificial sources in their analysis. This statement suggests that determining the source of these noises requires careful consideration of multiple factors and potentially eliminating external sources. Representatives of the United States Coast Guard plan to provide new information on the whereabouts of the absent underwater vehicle. In a recent statement that was made a few hours ago by Rear Admiral John Morger of the US Coast Guard, it was revealed that the crew on board Titan may only have approximately 20 hours of oxygen remaining. This estimate is based on the initial projection of 96 hours. Rear Admiral Morga stated that calculating the precise amount of air remaining is challenging due to the variability of individual air consumption among the five people aboard. During its journey to the wreckage of the Titanic off the coast of Canada, the submersible known as Titan lost contact with tour operators on Sunday. The incident occurred approximately 435 miles south of St. John S. Newfoundland. Rear Admiral Morga, when interviewed by news outlets, reported that according to the operator's information, there is an emergency life support system aboard that can supply oxygen for around 96 hours. He said that he is aware that making an accurate estimate of the calculation can be challenging since it relies on the number of individuals present and their usage. However, he said that they are focusing on a time frame of approximately 20 hours, extending from the current moment until tomorrow morning, during which we may potentially reach the conclusion of the 96-hour duration. Rear Admiral Morga said that they are presently allocating all possible resources towards the search and will persistently prioritize it moving forward. When questioned about the sounds picked up by sonar buoys deployed in the ocean by a Canadian plane, he did not confirm whether the sounds were produced in a pattern that could indicate they were generated by human activities. According to an expert, it was stated that a United Kingdom submariner has joined their command in Boston, thanks to support from the UK Consul General. This move was made to ensure the collaboration with leading acoustic experts from both the US and Canadian navies is more effective in helping them to decipher the meaning of a specific noise signature. Rear Admiral Mauga continued by saying that although the analysis is currently ongoing, they are taking action by directing their attention towards the operations of remotely controlled vehicles in the regions where the sonar signals suggest that the noise may be originating. As of right now, they have moved their remote-controlled vehicles to the site to explore those specific regions. At present, Admiral Morga said that they have not received any verification as to the source of the sound. According to its operator, a robotic device made in France with the capability of diving to extreme depths up to 20,000 feet underwater is assisting in locating and recovering the submersible. According to the operator, this underwater device has the ability to dive deeper than any other equipment at the North Atlantic site. It comes equipped with remotely controlled arms to cut cables or perform other maneuvers necessary to release watercraft from entangled positions. This state-of-the-art robot is designed for experts in a neutral tone to inform them about its advanced capabilities in the general domain. The automated device, currently stationed on a French research vessel, is scheduled to reach its destination on Wednesday evening, with only a short amount of time to offer support before the deadline the following morning. By that time, the sunken vessel's air supply is projected to be completely depleted. According to Olivier Lefort, this underwater robot is unable to lift the submarine independently. According to the source, 
The aforementioned robot has the potential to attach the Titan, which weighs 10 tons, to a ship that has the necessary capacity to lift it to the surface. Rescuing the crew of the lost Titan submersible and retrieving it using modern deep-sea rescue gear would be an exceedingly challenging endeavor. A successful rescue mission to retrieve Titan will necessitate the use of remote-controlled vehicles that permit surface operators to clearly monitor the submersible's whereabouts, identify potential obstructions, and attach cables capable of lifting it up thousands of meters underwater. However, finding Titan in the first place would pose a significant challenge. According to David Marquette, a former U.S. Navy submarine commander, if the Titan and its crew of five make it to the Titanic. So, what do you make of this recent news, and what do you think happened to this submersible? Be sure to leave your questions and answers in the comment section below, and help us to grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.